Welcome to St. Martin in the Fields. You join us for the Church of England's weekly online broadcast service. And today we're celebrating with the whole church near and far, today and forever, the Feast of All Saints. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to St. Martin in the Fields. Christians have always gathered at regular hours to say the Psalms, hear the scriptures and offer praise, thanksgiving, confession and intercession. In our morning and evening prayer as priests of creation, we offer to God the praise of all creatures and we seek God's mercy to be with us in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. These daily prayers shape our life at St. Martin's. Along with the Eucharist, they structure our life as a Christian community and open our imaginations to see the world as God sees it. At All Saints, we rejoice with the communion of saints in all ages and places, past, present and future, on earth and in heaven. We begin with a prayer for the Holy Land. Broken-hearted God, your ways are ways of gentleness and all your paths are peace. Speak to the hearts of those intent on hatred and extermination. Open the borders that aid may reach those most desperate. Visit the hungry, thirsty, injured and terrified with the transforming grace of your Holy Spirit. Uphold all who have experienced horror and fear worse to come. Empower the international community that it may bring reason and understanding to all amid grief and loss. Make of this crisis a moment of truth that in devastation people may resolve on a different path and in despair people may find a new hope. Change the souls of us all, that we might see through our enemy our only path to you, in Christ who is broken, that we might be made whole. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. 
As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure.
reading from Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. All Saints. The second word, saints, sounds elitist. The first word, all, sounds democratic. The combination is a wonderful mystery. But in that mystery, I believe, lies the clue to one of the most challenging conundrums of our day. I'm referring to the battles over identity politics. It sometimes feels our need to assert our identity and demand recognition for it from society leads to insoluble cultural and administrative problems. But I want to say a few words about the identity we find on this Feast of All Saints. All Saints is a festival that celebrates how God has created each one of us for a purpose, a purpose we cannot fulfill without each other, how God loves us all equally, yet loves each one of us as if we were the only one. All Saints rests on the notion of the communion of saints, which tells us we're part of a story that's simultaneously taking place now in the mundane and the limited and forever in the full companionship of God. All Saints transforms our notion of identity by turning our attention from ourselves to God, from who we uniquely are to what God is creatively making us, from where we specifically are coming from to where we are collectively going from where we are restless to where we find our rest in God, from our exhausting and endless quest to define our identity to inhabiting the identity we're given as a child of God. All Saints does make a distinction between the equality of all God's people and the particularity of some. Without being elitist, All Saints reflects the recognition that there are some individuals in whose lives God lifts the veil between heaven and earth, so that those lives are windows from time into eternity. That's why we call them saints, because in them we see holiness and thus more fully imagine and anticipate everlasting life with God. But meanwhile, All Saints retains its democratic character by appreciating that there are some moments in almost every life where God lifts the veil between time and eternity, and where in the miracle of birth or the tenderness of death, in the wonder of companionship or the gift of forgiveness, in the discovery of love or the embrace of restoration, in the glimpse of beauty or the kindness of a stranger, every single one of us can be a saint too. We've all known the desire to let our true self sing. Many of us have feared that society would not recognize or affirm the self that sang. I suspect all of us have sometimes felt overwhelmed by the cacophony of identities competing for recognition and affirmation. Hear the good news of all saints. Identity is fundamentally not a discovery to be defended, but a gift to be received. Identity is in the end not about recognition by society, but embraced by God. Identity is ultimately a story not about our assertion of what we are, but about God's invitation to what we may become. Identity is not about the isolation of establishing there is no one else on earth like me, but the solidarity of believing there is a place for each one of us at the heavenly banquet. All Saints gives us something the quest for identity never can. 
It replaces individuality with communion, solitariness with relationship, static identification with dynamic transformation, endless self-obsession with eternal belonging. If you're lost in a sea of identity politics, give thanks for all saints, because all saints turns identity into togetherness and politics into praise. Loving Father, your Son said, Blessed are you poor, but woe to you rich. Be close to all whom experience material poverty. Give them friends, give them work, give them hope, give them stability of life. Free them from the fear of crime, of impossible rents, of bad living conditions, of chronic illness. Give us eyes to see the wealth in those we call poor and the poverty in those we call rich. Speak your words of grace and challenge to all who are materially rich, that they may discover more fully how their wealth may honor and glorify you and make friends in your heavenly mansions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your Son said, Blessed are you hungry, but woe to you who are full. Open your heart to any whose lives are shrouded in hunger. Heal and succor all for whom food becomes the focus of or release from their deepest anxieties, such that eating becomes an escape or a torment. Strengthen all who work in farming and food service industries, 
and those who seek to cleanse the relationship of humankind to the earth, the seas and the skies, and the living things in each domain. Make all our eating a Eucharistic thanksgiving and a banquet of your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, your Son said, Blessed are you who weep, but woe to you who laugh. Spread your arms of mercy around all who grieve. Shelter every parent who's lost a child to sudden, premature, or violent death. Comfort those who feel the cost of living crisis has taken away their home, their hope, or their identity. And give wisdom and generosity to all for whom life and love and money seem to come easily and painlessly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Patient Father, your Son said, Blessed are you who are hated, but woe when all speak well of you. We pray for those we hate. In a moment of silence, we name before you the one we deep down know to be our enemy. Searching for your grace, we pray for those who hate us. Strengthen the hands of all who strive to bring lingering hatreds to the table of dialogue in the Middle East and Ukraine. Bring courage to those living in daily fear of military, militia, or terrorist attack. Give your spirit of truth to all seeking political office and any who come to distrust others' praise or see the price tag behind others' support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, our rock, our fortress, and our might, when our strife is fierce, our warfare long, Steal on our ear the distant triumph song. Make our hearts brave again and make our arms strong. Alleluia. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God give you grace to follow the saints in faith and hope and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>